Uh, hi everyone, it's your pal Martin Millard here, hope you're going well. I've just ordered a scratch-off map of the world I got off Amazon. This was about, like, less than a tenner. And it's like, scratch off where you've been. They say a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. We say it begins with a single scratch. Map is a large, high-quality wall map which features a gold top foil layer. Why? So you can scratch off all the places you've visited to reveal all whole new worlds below, featuring bright and colors and joyful details. The result is a totally unique and personal, personalized world map. What a perfect gift for the interpret traveler in life. So it comes in this tube, and this map right here, it's very small. But uh, this could fit, you know, somewhere up on either one of my walls. It's got like all of the countries of the world and uh, with all the geographic locations, you know, Tropic of Cap Cancer, Equator, Tropic of Capricorn. Uh, the thing is, a lot of the tiny countries, like the Caribbean, they're really like too small to scratch out. There's a little dot in the map. I mean, that's what they are. I mean, you try looking at some of these ones, the Pacific. Um, they're also just dots on the map, unlike Papua New Guinea, or my place of birth, Australia. So, uh, and the, the exciting thing was, like, once you've been to a country, not only do you scratch it off the map, you scratch the flag off, like, down here. To be precise, because I've been to the United States and Canada, I would only scratch off the states I have been inside, and also the provinces. Uh, for Australia, I'd do the same thing, because I've only... I spent 30 years in Australia and I only went to, like, three states of Australia and two territories. But uh, let's just say, you know, Russia, I'll just scratch the whole thing off because I traveled through the whole of Russia. And, uh, yeah. So not only does it come with, like, a map, it also comes with this little magnifying glass, which you know, magnifies, like, centimeters and inches. Uh, two lots of stickers, uh, actually, sorry, like three lots of stickers, and like really funny, like, like these ones are so weird, yeah, like, you can't really see it clearly, but the red ones, this one's like, oh, I hooked up in this park, oh, I kissed at the fireworks, uh, oh, I went on a family vacation, oh, I have a girl's day out, I always do that, oh, I went skiing, and all that, it looks... But literally, I would not be wanting to put any of these stickers on the map. It's or, or look, even these speech bubbles. Uh, the exciting thing is, it comes with pins, so you know I could pin places where I've lived, like Australia and Sweden and the United States and you know Kingdom. Uh, all these, oh, these things, these stickers. These are. I think. I think you use these to stick them on the map at the back, so you can stick on the wall. There must be at least three of these. This is a construction. No, it comes with four. And it comes with like a, a plectrum, like a guitar pick, so you use that to scratch. Um, yeah, so that pretty much all what contains inside of the scratch off your where you've been map. So I better start getting my map ready for Friday, it was like Tuesday, yeah. I decided I would put the map on my cupboard because when I sit down for my vlogs, it just makes it much more interesting. I mean, I didn't want to stick it on my walls in case, you know, when I come to move out at the middle of next year, um, it'll probably just rip a hole in the wall, or, you know what I mean, in the wallpaper. Like, I could have gone bigger, but I thought, you know, this is just a tenor, this is a nice thing to look at. This would be quite awesome, you know, to scratch off and actually see where I've been in the world. Bad idea, these flags don't stick into hardwood. So I took it out. Now, I lived in Australia from 1985 until... 2015 when I moved to Great Britain. I was last there in 2016. I'm just scratching out New South Wales, trying not to scratch out South Australia. Okay, we need a bit more. 
So we'll get up Melbourne and Victoria, which I went to like... Actually, I didn't go to Melbourne until I was 30. So next up we have this country, New Zealand. I am actually a citizen of New Zealand, even though I've never lived in that country, and I've never obtained a New Zealand passport. It's just that because my mother was born there, I'm actually considered one of them, but I always entered New Zealand as an Australian citizen. I never wanted to live there in my life. I just went there just to see my family, and as years went by, I just realized I was wasting my life going to all these stupid reunions that really sucked and I made an effort not to go back there and I haven't been back in almost 10 years. So let's just scratch the whole of both the South and the North Island off. Oh, oh, and we can't forget the flag. Uh, let's see if we can find... Oh, uh, yes. New Zealand between Netherlands and Nicaragua. And another flag with a Union Jack. There's only a couple of countries that still use the Union Jack. Australia, New Zealand, Tuvalu, Fiji. And let's not forget Hawaii, even though they're a state of the United States of America. So two down, I got like 83 or so more to go. Now this is going to be a bit of a hectic scratch because there's so many states in the United States of America and same thing with Canada. So I'll start off by saying that I was in California for a total of a week. Remember, I did not go to Nevada, I did not go to Las Vegas, because I thought Las Vegas would be a bit of a dump. Um, let's see, I went to Phoenix, Arizona, to see a heart. Yeah, don't want to get into Utah. Uh, where else did I go? Okay, I was in, lived in New York City for most of the time. Um, and also I could also say Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, I was in New York State. Uh, then there was Baltimore. Basically all this area. And be like, scratched off. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, Maryland, Washington, D.C. Uh, not much. Oh, uh, this is great. Let's see. I, I'm trying to figure out where Illinois is. Uh, that's a lake. That's. Oh dear, I just. Uh, it's been six weeks in. No, sorry, five weeks in the United States, one week in Canada in 2010. And I haven't gone back since because of visa problems and issues, which I will not deal into, as I've already spoken about on my video. But, uh... I still got, like, a lot of friends from the United States, but it's unfortunate that I can't go over and see them. They have to come and visit me in the United Kingdom. Um... Okay, oh, I, I could actually say Minneapolis. I was in... Minnesota for a couple of hours waiting for my flight to Phoenix. So scratch that out. Okay. Yeah, I want to think I better get into Arizona. Part do a better job. That's all scratched. Doesn't matter if I scratch in Mexico. I've already been in Mexico. But we'll do that a bit later. 
Uh, oh yeah, here, here is Illinois. Yes, I went to Illinois for 24 hours just to see Winger, Ted Polly, Trickster, and Jimmy Jamison of Survivor. A couple of years later, Jimmy Jamison died of a heart attack. So this melodic rock festival in uh, Elgin, Illinois, just outside of Chicago, was really special to me. Um, normally when I do map of the world, I call it the whole of the United States, in including like Hawaii and Alaska. To say that I've been there, even though like, I've only been to like maybe nine or so states. Okay, so that's. Yes. Um. I think for New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I. When I came back to New York City from Canada by bus, I did go to like Pencil. PA, um, New York City, and New Jersey. Um. Yeah, so, sorry to say, United States, I haven't really seen much. Oh, and before we get on to Canada, we got to scratch off the United States. Uh, ah, here, down the bottom, United States. The stars and tracks. Oh, I say, can you sing by the dawn's early light? Was so proud of the evening as the twilight lost gleam in who buys as by the stars. Da 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 da. And also, special love to my fr friends in Fromania. You guys are awesome. Now, let's go into Canada. Now, I'm gonna be stupid and basically just. Scratch out all of Quebec because I went to Montreal. I went to Montreal to meet porn star Carol Cox, but unfortunately, she got too drunk at the bar and didn't want to take my virginity, so I spent the next day pretty depressed, touching myself in the bathroom and um, eating Tim Tams, which is a strange biscuit which you can find in Canada. Um, <laughs> This thing here, Newfoundland and Labrador, that didn't become part of Canada until 1949. And that's much closer to Britain than any other Canadian provinces. So, we'll start scratching more of Quebec. Make sure we don't touch any other US states. Um, there's other, other, like, other provinces like New Brunswick, Halifax, sorry, the Nova Scotia is a province, Prince Edward Island. Um, there's even a bit of France territory, like, right around here. But, like, that doesn't come from them, but, like, St. Piers. I don't really like Montreal. The people, they were quite rude. A lot of people say, oh, French people are, are rude, but that's a stupid stereotype. I mean, I've been to France many times. And they're not rude in France. They're much ruder in Quebec. Yeah. But I tell you, French Canadian chicks are quite hot. Okay, and let's let's not forget to get into Ontario, like as what they say in Trailer Park Boys, work, worst case Ontario. Seems like this video it's gonna like go for hours and hours. I have to cut this up into many different parts, you know. Okay, not to scratch it into. Oh, oh, and Winnipeg is. I figure what, what, yeah, Winnipeg is around here. Like my best mate, Mel Steve, he emigrated there nine years ago to be with his wife. So he comes to visit me in London, like maybe once or twice a year, when it comes to work. Um, I've never been out to visit in Winnipeg because it's too complicated to fly there from the United Kingdom. I have to either transit in either like Montreal or Toronto. I don't want to get the bus from Toronto because it takes a whole day. But, um, yeah, uh, in the province of this one, uh, there's more Icelandic people in the diaspora there than anywhere else. So it's quite impressive. Ontario, I, in Ontario, I went to Toronto. So I think the Canadians don't pronounce it with the, the other T. So... That is Canada, and before I get on to other countries, let's make sure we scratch the rest out of Australia. Um, don't find Canada. 
Mm. Ah, yeah, Canada. Oh, Canada. Maple Leaf. The Canadians were quite smart because they adopted the Maple Leaf in the 60s because during the Suez Canal crisis, Canadian peace troopers in Egypt were confused to be British because of the Union Jack on the Canadian flag. So I just can't believe that, you know, stupid Australian New Zealand won't do what Canada's done. But, you know, as a communist, I like, kind of wish, you know, that native people would be in charge. Um, mm. Okay. Now, next up on my list is China. Uh, I'm just going to go scratch all of China out, because this is way too complicated for me. But first, we need to scratch China off the map. C H J yeah, Chechen Republic. <laughs> Crimea, Cook Islands are here. <laughs> so I went to Beijing on the way to London in June twenty eleven. I had 30 hours in Beijing and I didn't go back to China again until I was in Hong Kong which I have to scratch off a bit like later in 2016 so better start attacking all of China and staying within its borders even though I haven't seen much of China literally they call it just one China No, I don't want to get into India now. India comes like later. I also hope I don't have, like raise Bhutan. It's not like been there yet. And what if you do, Martin? Don't go into Mongolia. You can go into Inner Mongolia, but not Mongolia, as you haven't been in Mongolia yet. Oh, okay. Well. Funny thing is, when I'm scratching, I saw a little bit of China um, a couple of years ago when I was in Russia. I stopped off in a border town where Russia meets China on a river. And like, this like friend of mine on YouTube, RJ Inspire, he's actually been there because he spent a lot of time in Russia. So shout out to RJ Inspire. Um, uh, it doesn't have to be, be perfect to me as long. Um, yeah, let's try not, not to get into North Korea. Because I haven't been to the Korean Peninsula yet. So I know a little bit of um, Mandarin, like Ni Hao, Gongzi uh, Fakoi. Hmm. Nice thing why I have to color it different. Oh. And no, I've never been to Taiwan, but if I did, I would count that as a separate country. No, but only 14 countries recognize. Republic of China as a national country, and, and that even includes the Vatican. Um, yeah, it's getting... Yeah. So the way that's most of China scratched out. And what is next? Uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain, Northern Ireland. Now, I'm only just going to do, you know, you England, Scotland, and Wales, because I have not been like to Northern Ireland yet. Even though my good friend mate Sean is from there. Okay, uh, so that's what we're currently kind of living in our kingdom. Now let's scratch more flags out. They have to have the flag of England here, or. Excuse me. So, 
when there was like a Welsh flag, Wales. Oh yeah, United Kingdom. Here we are. God save our gracious King. God save our glorious King. God save the Queen. Okay. You have to change it from the King to Queen whenever monarchs change. You know, it's always been God save the Queen for almost seventy years. As in next year in February, Queen Elizabeth II, longest British reigning monarch, the only monarch of my life. And the only monarch of my life in the United Kingdom. So, I'm gonna end this for now. This is part one. Over and out. And just for laughs, there is actually a Welsh flag right here. <laughs> there you go. So, that's Welsh. Wales. Yeah. One of those is Scotland. To cut the crap. It took me a period of like eight years to get to every country in Europe. So I went to Europe every year of like 2011, 2012, and 2013. I didn't go in 2014 because I was too busy with work in Australia and I couldn't afford to go. Uh, I moved there in 2015 and I came back to Britain at the end of 2016. So literally we can scratch off all of this. So we're going for France. Now, the funny thing is, I've been to Paris so many times, I've never spent a night in Paris. Uh, Spain, I spent more hours inside the Spanish Empire than Spain itself. Portugal was like the last uh, country mainly in Europe I visited. I mean, Cyprus is... Cyprus is EU, but that's like more in Asia. Same thing with Azerbaijan. So we're going to scratch off Portugal. The funny thing is, I actually went to East Timor way before I went to Portugal, and the same thing with Macau. Uh, oh yeah, let's not forget these little islands, Italy and France. Uh, the Italian Peninsula, I didn't go to the Vatican until 2018, I went to Rome, but I had no time to visit the Vatican, then I visited San Marino. Um, I'm trying to think, what was it? there's like little Luxembourg, Belgium, I went there by accident. Uh, into the Netherlands. Germany, been to Berlin a few times and never seen the city. Switzerland, didn't really like Switzerland, too expensive. Just went there to go to Liechtenstein and a little bit of Austria. So. Oh, went Norway, totally love Norway. Been there twice. Um, Sweden. I lived in Sweden for a month in 2018. I got really pissed off for my job in London and I left. But then I eventually came back because nobody in Stockholm wanted to hire me for a, a decent job. They wanted me to be a chef. I'm not a chef. I'm a waiter. And basically in Sweden you can't get a personal number unless you have a job contract, which is just stupid because before the time of Brexit, you know, Swedes and all other people from EU could come to the United Kingdom and get a, a well, National insurance number without bollocks. Um, Balkans, I took a big trip to the Balkans. So, and also we're talking about Serbia. So, well, I've been to Serbia twice. And I spent a lot of time in Serbia last year. I actually think Kosovo is part of Serbia, even though I went to Kosovo a couple of years ago. And I don't consider Kosovo to be an independent country, but that's up to your own opinion. Uh, Belarus, they charged me 60 euros for a visa and I had to pay them in euros even though I was in the United Kingdom. I really love the Baltic nations. I've been to Finland but I've never seen anything in Helsinki. I had to rush to get to Helsinki then I get on another boat to get to Stockholm. Um, where else? Oh yeah, I was just scratching in Russia. Uh, where else? Oh yeah, and Turkey. I travelled through Turkey by train in 2012 to get to Iran. So I ain't scratching a Syria or Iraq because I haven't been there. But I'll scratch you off in Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Iran. So I've been to Iran. Iran is like one of my favourite countries in the world. This lady who was born in Rhodesia, she didn't want me to go into Iran in 2012 saying I wasn't safe. Well, I proved her wrong. 
years later, I saw her daughter at a shop in Parramatta, and I basically said, uh, up yours, your mum's wrong and racist. <laughs> okay, let's see. What other countries? Oh, yes, yes, I went to India. Went to India, and I didn't like it. Um, I, I have had some bad, you know, working relationships with people from India who have been rude to me and made comments about, like, the photograph of the one on my iPhone asking me about my girlfriend at all, and I would never, like, want to go back. And going through security at Delhi Airport is too intense because I went through the whole x-ray machine, and then when I, once I get to the gate, because some dickhead forgot to stamp my tag, uh, the military guy had to go through my, my bag at the gate. Like, what a total retard. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I might as well scratch in Nepal, because I went to Nepal twice within 12 months. And just don't scratch in, like, Bangladesh or Bhutan. So just scratch in. Um, okay. Uh, now we're going to go into Southeast Asia. So Burma or Myanmar, I spent a couple of hours on the border there, and I was actually taken into a brothel by my tour guide, which I thought was really disgusting. Because, I mean, if you are into that type of thing, like, seriously, don't go to Southeast Asia. Just go to Amsterdam. Uh, it's legalized. Um, in Thailand, I basically crossed every one of its borders within the land of a week or, like, less than 10 days. But I'm not really a big fan of Bangkok. Uh, Laos, I spent the 4th of July in uh, Vientiane, the capital, but I couldn't afford to go any further north. Uh, as for Vietnam... Uh, I went to both north and south, but I, I just went to Saigon, a Ho Chi Minh city. Okay, so that's looking up like nice and tidy. Just see if I scratch off a little bit parts of India and China, just as long as I don't scratch out like Bhutan, because I haven't been there. Okay, now we go into Malaysia, the western peninsula. So, this is like Kuala Lumpur. I've travelled up and down this peninsula many times. Uh, as for Borneo, I basically went there 2015 and I got a bit sick. I felt like I had pneumonia, so I flew back to Australia because I was too paranoid. Indonesia. I've only been to like Bali, um, Jakarta, this one here, and this island here of um, Ryu Islands, um, Batam Island, yeah. So basically, in Indonesia in a whole, I just scratched the whole damn thing off. Let's make that toy there. Yeah, and even get into like the dispute area of West Papua, who should be its own country, or actually, both West Papua and Papua New Guinea should reunite to become a proper Papua nation. The only countries that totally support West Papua are like Solomon Islands and Vanuatu, and it's been like a big conflict that's been happening there, like since you know my parents were teenagers, like well, no before they were teenagers. And then I'll scratch out Papua New Guinea. I got questioned by Australian customs for wanting to take a two-day trip. So I told the woman there that I fucking hate Australia. Excuse my French. But that's much my truth opinion. That's why I don't live in Australia anymore. That's why I don't travel on Australian passport. That's why I became a British citizen. Because, you know, Australia is a paranoid state. And it's just so many, like, dumb people who, who think it's so cool they want to migrate to a dumb island in the Pacific with no ferries to other neighbouring countries. No thanks. And also a bit a bit up yours to a lot of British people who think that I'm an idiot for migrating to the United Kingdom when it's basically in my blood right. Oh yeah. Oh, and then I just realised I had to scratch off these islands that are actually part of India, not Indonesia, where like a Christian preacher was actually murdered by indigenous people on those islands. Now we go back into the Middle East. I have been to Saudi Arabia, but not really properly. I flew in there, changed planes, and that was about it. At the time, there was no tourist visas and all, so you know, we just couldn't go in, look around the country. So just make sure you scratch off Saudi Arabia, don't try to get stretched to Yemen. As you might have seen in the past, I did want to go to Yemen, but unfortunately, I had a back injury in Bulgaria and I came back to Australia. Um, this is going to be a bit iffy, but little Lebanon is a little, there's a little dot here to make a mark. Yeah, that's much better, yeah. Just too small. Um, oh yeah, and I have been to the United Arab Emirates, like, twice, within 12 months. 
but I've never spent like you know a whole 24 hours I've just been there for like you know layovers I mean I've been to the city of like Dubai that's about it um okay oh and can't forget Ireland uh Republic of Ireland that's the right thing but I don't I just won't scratch at Northern Ireland okay so that's most of Europe done uh, Iceland, yes. I totally love Iceland, despite its price. I haven't been to the Blue Lagoon, and if I went to Iceland now, I don't think the Blue Lagoon would be open to the public because of COVID. It's a beautiful country. It's the most northern part of the world I've been to. Uh, so it's beautiful, and you should go. Uh, uh. Oh, and I haven't scratched much of Ukraine. I went to Ukraine in 2018, and the funny thing was, the people at the border, they didn't question me just for coming from Russia many years ago. And now, we're just going to go through Russia, which, in where I am, that is the port of Vladivostok. I travelled from Vladivostok all the way to Moscow without flying in a whole week on the Trans-Siberian. But for the, all of Mother Russia's sake, I'm just going to scratch out all of Mother Russia. You know, but this is what I've done. I've traveled all through Mother Russia. Uh, I also scratched all these islands off because they're all Russian. I mean, literally, I should be scratching these ones off because they're Norwegian, but I'll save it for another time, you know. And, uh. Uh, uh. Excuse me for yawning, I've just been working for a couple of hours today. Do my usual job, the daily grind. Um, oh, don't switch to Mongolia, Martin. Uh, Kazakhstan, make your jokes about Borat, but I really like Kazakhstan. Despite the fact that I was asked for 50 bucks to cross the border with, to Kyrgyzstan. I will come back, though, because there's other stands to visit. Wait. Yeah. Um, mm hmm. Oh, yeah, and get to Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, get that off the map, yeah. That's great stuff. Just don't go into Uzbekistan or Tajikistan or even Afghanistan. <laughs> uh, start that. Excuse me. So... The other thing is... That island right here, I think it's either part of Japan or it's Russia, it's really disputed. Um, yeah, cause, I mean, Japan actually ends here, so it's still Russian territory, so I'll scratch that off. So it fits in the map. Just, uh... That's all of Europe scratched off. Um, oh yes, and I've got to scratch off a bit of Morocco and also Gibraltar. Didn't like Morocco and I haven't been back to Africa in 10 years. No offense to my friends in Africa. I really want to visit, but so much of Europe has always gotten in the way in my life. It's always been so much cheaper to visit like countries in Europe, but now that I'm done with Europe, I'd like to come back and visit you and to be political, I'm not scratching off the rest of Western Sahara because I believe it to be its own country, no matter how many people, no, sorry, how many countries recognize it as a country, how disputed it is, and that dumbass thing Donald Trump did. I mean, you could be political and say, oh, Sahara is Morocco and all, but fair enough, but yeah, but Kosovo is Serbia and Artsakh is Azerbaijan. No, sorry, no, Artsakh is Armenia. If, if I said Karabakh is Azerbaijan, I would piss off a lot of people. Um, yes, yeah, getting really political. Okay, now let's get into Mexico. It took me eight years to come back to North America after my trip, but I haven't been in Mexico City. But I'm scratching the whole of Mexico off. Don't really care. It's just one country. I've only been to Cancun and all, all the way to the border with Belize. Hmm. 
So that's all of Mexico done. I like the food. Um, except I literally, I haven't seen anything quite interesting in Mexico, just beaches. I think up in Cancun. Then there's Belize, which was a former British colony. Spent like half a day in Belize, but I had to get out. But otherwise, I had to pay this extra tax. I had to pay 18 bucks to leave the country. Guatemala, El Salvador. Loved El Salvador and their food and their people and their beautiful churches. Honduras, not really a big fan of Honduras. Basically, I arrived at night and I couldn't find my hotel. So basically, I got this druggy taxi driver to take me to like a really cheap, dingy hotel. Nicaragua, how much I love you so much. San Diego taught me a lot. I had Christmas Day in Nicaragua in 2018, I'll never forget. So glad I wasn't in London at the time. And I was just scratching up Costa Rica, even though in my opinion Costa Rica was more, mm, yeah. Um, just don't scratch in Panama. Oh yeah. There's French Guiana I went to. I took a cheap flight from France to get to French Guiana. Then there is Suriname. I speak Dutch. And the funny thing is the British actually let the Dutch keep Suriname in exchange for New York. Then there's this Guyana, and they have a dispute with Venezuela because half of Guyana was actually part of Venezuela, but the British took it off. And then there is Brazil. I've only been to the northern part of Brazil, but I'm just going to scratch the whole map of Brazil off to make my map look satisfied. But I don't like touch any of the other Spanish-speaking nations because I haven't been to them yet. The funny thing is, Maddie Luca, I follow her, she lives in Uruguay with her South African boyfriend because his mother emigrated from Uruguay to South Africa back in the day. So she's Australian, her husband's South African, Uruguayan, and then they now live in Montevideo and they're just waiting for the bloody pandemic to end. So, you know, they can move out to Australia after a time and travel more. Mm. Kind of funny how, like, where the Latin American diaspora go. I mean, so many people from Latin America fled to, you know, Sweden or Norway back in the day. So, let's get make sure we get all the parts of Brazil shaded out, Boa Vista, and not get to Venezuela, Colombia, or Peru. Pretty good. And there we are. My battery is nearly done. And so, there he is. That is my scratch map. All scratched off. 85 nations and a few like funds that are pretty dispute Hope you're gonna have a good map like that Buy one. It's only a tenner. Anyway, I'm Martin the Metalhead over and out